Good morning, Kate. How are you, Stephanie? Hey. Hey. Awesome. Hey. Good morning, Mr. Eric McKenzie. Hey. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And y'all know, right? Y'all know we we snuck in another get another panel number, right? Uh oh. <laughs> we snuck in another uh, uh honorary guest on the call this morning. So uh, yeah. Hey. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's call. Um, my name is Eric McKinley, and uh, we got our co-host, Miss Brandy Gates. And also, we have another guest on the call. We have Miss Keisha uh, Brody, who did such an awesome job yesterday, uh, excuse me, um, last last Friday on the, on the call that we asked her to come back um, to do the prayer again. So, guys, go ahead and um, get, your, get your pen and your pad. And uh, take some notes because we got a phenomenal speaker that Miss Miss Bethany Gates is gonna uh, excuse me, uh, Miss Brandy Gates is gonna be um, announcing this morning. And if you guys are are, are viewing uh, Facebook Live, if you're a friend of mine, I'm actually going live on the call as well. So I tagged my co-host, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So stand by, guys. Entry and exit tones are off. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. Hey, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's call. We're gonna um, we're gonna have Miss Keisha Brody start the call off with the prayer, and then right after that, I'm gonna record the call and get us started. We're gonna have Miss Miss Brandy Gates introduce our guest speaker. So, Miss Keisha, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, you have the call. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the activity of our limbs and the breath that we have in our lungs, Lord God. Lord, help us to be grateful and see everything in a grateful light, Lord God. God, I thank you that uh, every time we, we feel our pain, we'll thank you for the many times that you deliver us. Every time we feel sadness, we thank you, Lord God, that you remind us of, of your joy and how much joy you have given us. Every time we see a, a problem and an obstacle, I thank you, Lord God, that we'll be able to see solutions. Lord, I thank you that in all things, Lord God, that we'll be able to give thanks and give you praise, Lord God, that, that we'll walk around with an attitude of gratitude, Lord God. Lord, Bless us this day, Lord, that we may be able to hear the word that the guest speaker has. May they be able to present it plainly and articulate it clearly. And more importantly, may we be in position to receive and to hear it. Somebody's in need, Lord God, of direction. Someone's in need of motivation. Someone's in need of some clarity. And I thank you this day, Lord God, that we will grow in you. We will grow in our purpose. We will grow into the destiny that you have for us. And that everything that, that sits on us and that weighs us down and that tries to distract us will become small and minute in relation to the bigger picture that you have for our life in relation to the victory that you have given us, in relation to the power and the strength that you have equipped us all with. So we, we yield ourselves, our minds, and what we think we know, and we open ourselves up to new revelation, to new understanding, so that we may be transformed in our mind and that we be uh, made available and visible and manifested in everything that we think, that we do, that we say every place that we walk, every place that we go, every person that we come in contact with, we thank you that a transformation is beginning, Lord. It will be a ripple effect from what you do within us today. Now, Father, we commit this day into your hand that you will guide us, protect us, and keep us. We commit this call into your hand, and we thank you for every participant, every um, person on the panel, and we thank you for blessing and keeping them and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, before I give you the call, uh, Brandy, before I give you the call, this is a special day for me too, man. I want to wish my mom um, a happy birthday today. So uh, she's down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and she just popped on the live as well. So I just want to wish her a happy birthday and may God continue to bless her and, uh, in her life and um, 
you know, just just continue that favor on us. So happy birthday, mama. So y'all. Happy birthday, mom. <laughs> so let me go ahead and get the call recorded. Give me one second. The recording has started. All right, grand morning, grand morning, grand morning, everybody. This is Mindset Motivation on Monday, and we are so excited to have you here today. So our guest speaker comes all the way from the Wendy City, Chicago, Illinois. He's been married for 15 years from his Tiffany Daly. He has three children, Ashley, Addison, and Tristan. He is a student athlete performance specialist at the Occupation. He started his first legal business in 1999, and his favorite quote is, Tell me, I will forget. Show me, I'll remember. And call me, I'll learn. So his topic is, Don't Count Me Out, Overcoming, Persevering, and Succeeding. So without further ado, I introduce to you, Mr. Carvel Bailey. First, uh, let me the uh, line, Carvel. Hey. That's okay, guys. We overcoming yeah. some things right now, so <laughs> don't worry about it. We will be fine, okay? We'll be fine. We're gonna give him a second to get together. And uh, Brandy, go, go ahead and see if you can um if you can reach him again, and see if he is. I sure can. Okay. Meanwhile, guys. As we um as we host these calls every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the intent for these calls is to give us uh, give us something to look forward to as far as inspiration and uh, personal development as well. You know, we have to find the motivation. Our situation should be a motivation. I'm really excited to hear what Mr. Bell is going to be talking about because he's talking about don't count me out and. How many times have you guys actually had um, a situation where people were actually counting you out? You know, if you if you've seen the if you've seen the uh, if you've seen the flyer that I created, um, it was a picture of Muhammad Ali, a picture of Muhammad Ali, and he was getting knocked back. But as you know, he was the greatest, and we already knew not to count him out. So I'm just a uh, right. excited. So. Is are we good? So, Carville, can you first start please, to unmute yourself, please, All right. sir? I am on. All right. All, All right. right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I want to uh, thank you, Brandy and Eric, for the opportunity. And pardon my timeliness, trying to get on, but dealing with technology, sometimes <laughs> things happen, but it just goes great into what we're talking about. They don't count me out. I said I'm gonna be on the call, and I am here today on the one of the greatest leadership calls in the country right now. So I thank y'all for the opportunity. Um, when we think about as 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 I was pondering over this title, and you know, first of all, my background um, is in education, coaching. Um, I've been coaching for about 27 years now. I've been in education for about 20 years. And um, one of the greatest things in sports is comeback. And I think that everyone roots for the underdog. So before I really get into it, just give you a little bit of background of my story. Again, my name is Carvel Bailey. Um, and as a grammar school individual, um, as a basketball player, I was actually told by my dad that he wasn't going to let me play anymore um, if I didn't get my weight together because he was afraid that, you know, I would have health issues and things on the court. Um, but even at that particular time, I kept pressing, kept moving forward. Um, and high school, as a freshman, um, I was on the basketball team. I was counted out, uh, you know, they have A teams, they have B teams. I was placed on the B team 
in favor of some other individuals. But after the first game, I had like 15 assists. Uh, didn't have a lot of points, but I showed that I was better than, than the point guard. So they counted me out then. And after the first game, they moved me up to uh, the A team. As a varsity player, um, I was actually, I transferred my junior year. I was actually uh, cut my senior year because I had just came to a new school, tried out, they had who they wanted. And that particular time, again, I was counted out. Um, I asked to be a manager. Long story short, the next day, someone kicked off the team because of their grades. Lo and behold, I wound up going from being a manager to being a starter as well as a captain on that team. So, again, um, you know, I, I said, like, don't count me out. Like, this is my goal. This is my dream. In college, I went to a Division three school because of the high school fiasco um, there. A lot of people didn't think that I was going to play. Play, we won a conference championship. And then from there, I wanted to be a – wanted to play Division One. And so the new term now is bet on yourself. And I bet on myself, went uh, Division One. I. I was a walk-on, so I had to work for everything I got. So I'm saying is just give you a little bit of background of, of my story, um, that since the beginning of time with me and with this sport called basketball, uh, I've had to prove myself worthy – um, time and time and time again. And so as leaders, as business people, as entrepreneurs, we have to continue to press on. And so, again, um, the fly was eloquently made, uh, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, um, showing him, you know, kind of being, you know, hit, falling out on the ropes a little bit. Um, so let me just break down the word count. So the word count, um, and I got this from the free dictionary because it gives you a whole lot of different definitions for a word. The word count means to have importance or to reckon. Um, and to be counted out, it means to be declared a loser or your inability to stand up. To be counted as a loser or your inability to stand up. So as business people, as leaders, a lot of times people may not support us. People may not think that we can come through in the clutch, so to speak, and they really doubt our ability to be able to stand up, to be able to stand on two feet. And so the word stand up means to rise upright to your feet, to assume um, an upright position, to maintain a specific position. So in leadership, um, and especially me with, with, with coaching, you have to stand up. And, you know, it's a term, stand up and be accounted for. Well, in your standing up, now, that all sounds great, but if you're standing up, it's going to be pitfalls. And so um, five people that I deem to be some of the greatest um, people that have stood up to their feet is, first of all, Michael Jordan. Now, we all know some of Michael Jordan's story. Um, he was counted out as a freshman. Like, nobody paid him any attention yet in the championship game. In the big moment, he came through and hit a game-winning shot. Um, in the pros, his confidence. So now as leaders, we have to have a, such a confidence, such an aura. And because we have that confidence and that aura, that can be confused a lot of times as conceited. But that's a very, very fine line. And I think a lot of leaders – we use the word humble in a negative sense because we think, you know, to be humble is just to be totally, totally sub submissive and to kind of like not go forward towards your dreams. Well, Michael Jordan's confident. He had already hit a championship shot. He was in the pros. Well, his very first dunk contest, he showed up to the dunk contest on all his jewelry. He even dunked the first round in sweatsuits where all the other players had, you know, their full uniforms on. And so there's going to be times where people are going to look at your confidence. You're going to say, oh, this dude thinks that he's too much. Or this lady thinks that she's too much. So what happened after that cup contest in the All-Star game? They stalled him out. Literally, they did not pass him the ball. It was, it was, it was a collective agreement by all of the veterans on the Eastern Conference team. We're not going to pass this dude the ball because he thinks that he's all that. Well, you have to 
you have to think that you're all that because everybody else is counting you out. Nobody else is expecting you to succeed except for those that are very, very close to you. And sometimes they're not even the ones that think that you can succeed. It's an old commercial with Michael Jordan. He talked about how he missed 9,000 shots. He lost over 300 games. He was called to take the game-winning shot 26 times, and he missed. <laughs> but he said, because I failed, that's why I succeed. And I think that that's very, 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 very vital because the reason that we – there's a difference in people counting you out and you tapping out. Like in wrestling, if a, if a, if, if a wrestler taps the mat, you're giving up. So we can't give up on our dream just because other people are counting us out. And so we know the story about Michael Jordan. He, you know, went on to beat every great there was, win six championships. But even after his first three, people counted him out. He went to baseball. And I was watching something and, and said that during his 18 months of baseball, Michael Jordan was up at the crack of dawn. And he was the first one to practice and he was the last one to leave. In order to be a great leader, you have to be persistent, but you have to show up when other people don't want to show up. You have to stay when other people are ready to leave. You have to be a, 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 a student, and you have to develop yourself because everybody else is counting you out. And so we understand Venus. You know, Venus Williams, she, you know, people count her out after all the grand slams. Then she lost a few, you know, she lost to the young girl, and people counted her out. She came back even after a baby. She won. Magic Johnson, people counted him out after, you know, he came forward with his uh, HIV. Not only did he play in the Olympics and win the All-Star Game that same year, but he's an amazing business person. And he used all those same basketball principles, winning principles, to so that he could be successful as a business owner. Tiger Woods. We all know Tiger Woods' story. He's one of the greatest. We all remember him walking down that back nine, winning that Masters in that red sweatshirt, everybody standing up cheering, everybody proud. Then he got in a little trouble, and what did everybody do? They counted him out with a little adversity, and it took some time. And, see, we have to understand as leaders that some of that pain, some of that pain that we go through is just preparation. That pain is just preparation that is preparing us for that time in which we can stand up and be our best. So a lot of times, um, you know, in all these leaders, we see all the great things that they do, but no one really sees the, the backstory. No one really sees all the pain, all the, 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 the quiet time, all the personal time when they're questioning their self. Because while everybody else is questioning us and counting us out, we have to be mentally prepared for that. Because in business, just the same way with basketball or with sports, and in life, you have ebbs and flows. You have ups and downs. You have the pitfalls. You have the good times. You have the bad times. But most people just see the good times because most people don't show the bad times. Well, back to the flyer. I'm probably one of the greatest, probably the greatest athlete of all time. He was able to do something that other individuals were not doing. And in doing my research, Muhammad Ali started this, that all great leaders have taken on. I'm talking about sports leaders since then. And that's just the act of being able to visualize. So before I close out, um, as a leader, first of all, you have to have trust and belief yourself and your vision. You have to stay positively fed. If that's getting on calls like this, if that's, you know, listening to things um, early in the morning, late at night throughout the day that's going to keep you positively fed because there are so many people that's counting you out and they're going to be feeding that negativity in your mind. And if you haven't stayed balanced to be able to get those positive things, it's going to outweigh all the good things 
and all the dreams that you may have. You have to stay learning. Like, you have to take notes. You have to take notes on the good things and the bad things. And why do you take notes on the good things so that you know what's working? Why do you take notes on the bad things? People may say, well, Carver, I don't want to remember that. Well, you have to remember it or at least recall it so that you won't make the same mistake again. There's nothing wrong with failing. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. We just don't want to fail and continue making the same mistake over and over and over again. And then you have to take action. We can be in the planning stages forever. And a lot of times we get paralyzed, so to speak, because we're overthinking or we're thinking about what other people are going to say. Well, those people already counted you out anyway. Why are we listening or feeling as though we have to prove them right. I'm a person to where I want to prove people wrong. I've like throughout my whole life, give you just a, just a portion of my story. I wanted to prove people wrong. And so I was in church yesterday and you know, the way that, and, and God is, is a comedian a lot of times um, because he does things to where it just makes you laugh. Like, wow, really? Um, but I heard three things, and I want to leave you all with this. In order to not be counted out, in order to stay focused on the things that you want to do, the dreams that you have, and you have to understand that God says that he will give you the <laughs> desires of your heart. But it has to line up with his will also, because we may desire something that's not good for us, and then we wonder why we're not getting it. It's not necessarily lining up with God's will. So here are three things that I that I want to leave you with that all leaders must be able to do, all individuals, but all leaders must be able to do in order to take themselves to that next level and complete what other people have come to mouth with. The first thing is you have to have forgiveness slash gratitude. Like, you have to be able to forgive people for the things that they've done, the things that they've said. But more importantly, you have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself for all those things that you are regretting because that word regret, like, that will hinder us. That will stop us from doing so much because we are regretting that we didn't move and take action or, or, or that we didn't do this or that we didn't do that. And that regret, that pain is much more difficult than that pain of discipline. So we have to be able to forgive and then move on. But in that forgiveness, we have to have some gratitude. We have to be thankful. And when we, we can be thankful for another opportunity, when we can be thankful for the things that we have, then and only then can we move on. The second thing is you have to be persistent. You have to be persistent. You got to keep knocking the walls down. Michael Jordan said that he missed over 900 shots. Did he stop shooting? No. Muhammad Ali, you know, in the Thriller, Thriller in Manila, like, he went through all those rounds. But he was persistent. He took all those punches. He was persistent. You know, the Bible says, don't be weary and well doers. But we also talk about like, don't think, don't give in to the pressures, to the ills, to the things around you. Keep going. Keep being persistent. That's where the either elephant, one of my mentors told me, is one bite at a time. So you have to be persistent and move towards that goal and that dream. And then the last thing, this is the greatest thing, visualization. You have to visualize the end result. You have to visualize. Please enter your PIN followed by the pound or hash. If you do not know your PIN, please enter pound or hash. Thank you. you please enter your PIN followed by the pound or hash. If you do not know your PIN, please enter pound or hash. Thank you. Did you know that Muhammad Ali was shadow boxed 12 rounds part of his training? 
as he would shadow box 12 rounds, visualizing his opponent to come out. And he would box his opponent that was not there for 12 rounds. But Muhammad Ali won his fight before the fight. We are called to do great things, but we have to see it. And vision is greater than sight. Vision is when you can see things that, not, that have not even happened. But you have to have the faith to know that it happened. So as I close, and again, I thank you guys for this opportunity. Um, but understand that you have to forgive and be grateful. Forgive and be grateful. Forgive yourself. Forgive other people and be grateful for all the pain, for all the pitfalls, for all the setbacks and for all the wins that you got. Celebrate the small wins. We have to celebrate each and every small win. That's how you don't get weary and be counted out. The second thing, persistent. Be persistent. Be persistent. Be persistent. I have to be persistent getting on this call because it wasn't working. Be persistent because there's somebody out there that needs the blessing of the gift that God has given you. The third thing is visualize. Visualize and see the goodness Visualize and see the great things that you can do, that you were born to do. Visualize that dream that you had in your head at night, and then work your butt off to make it come true. Because while other people may be counting you out, it's okay if they count you out because you can stand back up to your feet. The greatest thing that all leaders can do, just don't tap out. Just don't tap out. You tap out, that means that you've given up. As long as you can be persistent and don't tap out, don't tap out. Eventually, all your dreams, all your goals, all your aspirations come to pass. So I hope that helps somebody. Uh, for all those people that have somebody counting you out, that's proven wrong. That's proven wrong. And let's do that thing that we know that God put in us. God put in us a talk. God put in us a baby. Because the pastor said yesterday is up for us to not abort that baby. Don't abort that dream. Don't abort that thing because other people don't see it coming from you. I thank you guys much. This session is no longer being recorded. I'm going to do a one-time Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> you brought that fire, Carlfield, baby. So we appreciate it this morning. Man! Three things. You was on my street for so today. Forgive and be grateful. Oh, I've been struggling on the forgiveness side, which therefore has made me struggle on the be grateful side. But I promise you that everything you said was true. It was very intelligent. And I'm a work in progress. Um, man, <laughs> I love sports. Man, y'all didn't know I'm a time boy. I, I got six brothers. So I ain't get girly, girly shots about 25, 25, 25 hours straight. You know, sneakers, hoodies, windbreaker, jogging pants, like a straight dude, right? So visualization is everything. The more you visualize, the stronger that desire is. And it becomes, uh, it turns more from within. It, it transfers to the outside. And you're going to have life happen. So life happening is just simply a distraction from the big picture. But once you realize and understand that, and you're able to focus in spite of life happening, you'll begin to weed out. The weeds, the baggage, and the weight that's holding you back. Like we talk about all the time, the excuses that people make. When you remove the excuses, you learn resilience, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to overcome, and you grow. Grow hands. It's called grow through what they're going through. And that's what this call is designed for. That's why we are faithful and consistent in bringing the call to y'all. And we do our very best not to allow things, life, and other obstacles to keep 
plus from bringing in such great speakers like Corvell and many others that have been on the top. That's what I got all those three things, but you talked to me, Corvell, so thank you. Eric, I'll pass it off to you. Coach Carvel, what's going on, brother? How you doing this morning, man? Appreciate you for coming out and giving us some time. I know you're in a different time zone. Um, you're 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 on the Central Time Zone, right? Chi Town. Yes, Central sir. Central Time Zone. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I know you had to get up a little early, man. I appreciate you, you know, dedicating some time to us. Um, as 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 um as always, because I've heard you speak before. You know, I hear your show. Um, I hear some some recordings, and I actually study what you what you speak about. So I appreciate you, like I said, bringing bringing your own bring your information, your knowledge, and your experience to our call, man. So thank you. Um, my takeaway, man, was persistence, 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 persistence. You know, when those others that don't want to get up and do or don't want to stay late to do it, you know, many people deem themselves as being leaders. Um, also, the forgiveness. I struggle with that as well. You know, um, we, we, we're supposed to forgive, but we're never supposed to forget. And I've always been taught, don't forget um, not to let it harp, but not to forget so it doesn't repeat itself. Or if it starts to repeat itself, you recognize it. You know, you, you, you want to make sure you, you, you pinpoint that moment. Um, awesome call, man. You know, awesome call. I got a lot of great nuggets, but uh, if you got a minute to hang around, this is the point in the call where we actually open up the call for our guests to ask questions or even make comments. So if you're if you're able to hang out with us for a little while, I appreciate it. Um, guys, we're gonna um, go ahead and allow you to ask questions of, of Mr. Carvel Bell, a Coach Carvel. Um, you mind if we call it Coach? Huh, Coach? <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't, I don't mind it at all. You know, I, to be honest. Yes, sir. Um, I'm 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 looking to get away from that. Yeah. But here's why. Because coaching is what I do, is not who I am. I got you. And I'm starting to understand that more and more and more. I don't I don't mind it because it's always been Coach Carvel Bailey, but the coaching is what I do. And because it's so much more. If it's the financial education, coaching, and you know, just all about teaching. But yeah, Coach Carvel Bailey, go ahead and eat. Hey, man, check it out. We're going to open up this call, guys. Um, star six to unmute yourself if you have a question or a comment. And then do me a favor, guys, as, as to be courteous to the rest of the callers, make sure you star six and mute your device back. So the call is open. Star six to unmute yourself. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. Coach, I know you are your uh, best what you do that are, but again, I have to digress to say yes, sir, that is who you are, and that is what you do. By the way, this is Sharon Seal from Chicago, Illinois. Great nuggets, great call, great information. All right, thanks. Thank brother you, Sharon. sir. Thanks, brother Sharon. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Hey guys, star six to unmute yourself if you got a question or a comment. Star six, call is open. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Carvel and Ms. Ms. Brandy Gates and Mr. Eric McKenzie. I want to thank you for the call, sir. And like you shared on this call, I just want to comment, you know, like you said to athletes playing basketball, playing golf, Tiger Woods, the boxers, Muhammad Ali, and then you said being a leader, we have to, you know, we people want to count you out, but you have to be ready not to be counted out in both poets. And I love when you said you have to be able to forgive, like forgive where you are, but be grateful to move on, to move and be submitted, to submit yourself and be, be persistent to go and find your physics, find what you have to learn, stay plugged in, get on the conference call, get on the webinar, go to some of the functions that the, the uh, conferences that is being planned. So you have to sit down and 
you as that individual being a leader, you have to see your vision. You have to put your vision in place. And when you see it and see your vision on site, have faith, and that it will happen, you get up to be consistent, be grateful, and work, work your butt off. So I love it. I want to thank you, sir. And another to one takeaway, you said all your dreams is your goal and all your ambition and your vision. Do not be about the dream, but but be about what you want to do in your dream. Figure it out and be grateful and grow. Don't be counted out, but be counted in. And I end that with my motivation is my vision. So everyone have a wonderful day. God bless. Hey, Miss Gwen, thank you for that. Hey, um, hey, coach, real, real quick, you you mentioned you mentioned um you mentioned a scripture, and you said that you know God will give us the desires of our heart, but there's a caveat. There's there's a there's a but to that, right? It has to line up with his with his word, right? He ain't gonna just give us, he ain't gonna just give us no junk. He ain't gonna just give us something just because we want it, and you know. <clears throat> A lot of people sometimes I see, especially being new, being new to business, um, and I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay new because to me, and it is to me, for me, staying new means I'm, I'm steadily learning. I'm staying fresh. So if anybody hears me, it may be four more years down the road or, or six more years, I'm 10 years in, I'm still going to be new to business. You know, business is still going to be new to me. I want to keep learning, but I see a lot of people lately, a lot of people lately wanting that instant gratification but they're not persistent things don't work out the way they want them to work out so they they uh they want it right now that microwave what 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 would you say to someone who does not have the patient patience to watch their business or even their life develop what's your advice well um you know another another quote that I heard, um, I'm not sure if it was one of one of my personal coaches or just someone along my life, but they said that like God will never take you where your character can't keep you. It's some 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 along that line. So those things that we want and that we want like right away, the question is, are we prepared? To do that, are we prepared to, to have that? So, like me with basketball, um, athletes that come to me, a parent that come, you know, to me. First of all, that they think that I'm crazy because I always tell their athletes, okay, the garbage cans are in these corners. And they look at me and they say, "What do you mean?" And I say, "Because when you're working with me, you're going to work harder than you ever worked." because you, you just don't know how to properly work out um, to, to be able to reach those goals. So when I point out the garbage cans and they look at me, and then roughly five, no more than 10 minutes, they're <laughs> running to that garbage can, especially the first time, and they're throwing up. And then I look at them and I say, congratulations, because now you've just reached that point. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, um, it's another athlete, and I'm not sure who it is, but it said, like, he doesn't start counting his reps until he gets tired. Because that's when the hard work comes. Like, when you get that first setback, that's when you really should start getting excited. Because that means that that's where the learning comes. So to answer your question, Eric, is God will test us and see if it's something that we really want. So for those individuals that want it right away, well, you may get it right away in what like a pseudo prize, what looks like to be that prize, and then most people lose it right out of their hands because their character or they like didn't work prepared. Just think of all the lottery winners that we hear about that win the lottery, and then two months later they're totally broke. Well, yeah, it has something to do with their financial education, yeah. but they work prepared. So a lot of times, God will, and in fact, give us that same test 
time and time and time again. And until we pass that test, that's when I believe that God then sees, okay, you really want this thing because I put you through this test and you have to do this and do this and do this. And if you didn't do it, then you didn't move forward. And that's been an issue that I've had to deal with. It's like, okay, I'm getting this test. I'm getting this test. What can I learn from it to where I can apply? That's why I say write down the good things and the bad things so that we, we can repeat the good things, but, but don't repeat the bad things. So for those, you know, individuals, and I see it a lot on the basketball side. They want instant gratification. They think they can play for this team or this team, and that's going to instantly get them a scholarship. But you, you get the scholarship because the coach thinks that you can play, and you got a bad attitude, and then now your name is on the bottom of ESPN ticker because you didn't rob the store, did something, and now that coach gets fired because he got a bad eye. So you have to understand that the not only the pain, but the process. The process is so that you can learn. The process, you know, we don't take an egg out and put it in the skillet if we want a scrambled egg. It's like, it's a process. You gotta, you gotta crack that thing open. You gotta crack and then, it. you know, you gotta beat it up. You gotta add the salt and pepper. Whatever you do, there's no such thing as instant gratification that's going to get you that thing that you immediately want. And if it's something that the, the outside people, the outside people may say, oh, Eric McKinley lost like 30 pounds. And when you and I had this conversation, yeah. you looked at me and you was like, oh, coach, you look good. And I was like, hey, man, you looking good. And you was like, yeah, man, it's it's been hard. Me, me and my wife over the last two, three months, it's been hard, but I got this weight off. Well, I hadn't seen you in person in five or six months. So it looked like, okay, well, it was a fix to you. But the first thing that you told me was like, man, coach, it's been hard. Yes, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, so sir. When, so when other people may see, okay, like Eric McKinley did it instantly. No, nah, it was some nice where Eric was, was probably – like drinking ice water so they even <laughs> run to get that ice cream. You know what I'm saying? So, so there's no such thing as instant gratification. People just see the end result, but they don't see the process. Absolutely, man. You hit the nail on the head, bro. Any, but we know anything that is worth having is worth working hard for. We'll appreciate it in the long run. Um, but I appreciate that explanation. Hey, guys, listen, we got a, a, got enough time for like two more two more responses, okay? Star six to unmute yourself if you have a comment or a question. Coach Carvel, a comment, a question. Star six to unmute yourself. Okay. We're not going to hold you up, sir. We appreciate you for coming on and, and uh, like to get you to uh, give us some, give us, give us some closing remarks before I turn it back over to, to, uh, to Brandon. Yes, sir. If you can give us some closing remarks, we're going to go ahead and shut this thing down. Um, I would say that everybody that's, that's, that's out there, um, as difficult as it may be, um, keep going. Keep going. And it's, it, you know, it can be difficult, but it's definitely rewarding in the end. And see, baby, have a great day. Find something. Find something that's going to push you beyond that pain. If it's, you know, you know, you hear my son in the background. Yeah. You know, I just dropped my daughter off. So, you know, when people say your 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 why has to be strong enough. Yeah. Um, from a from a coach's standpoint, again, um, when when my players always understood, so at the start of the year, and, you know, I gave you all the three points, but, like, these are really things that I that I practice. So at the start of every year, I always started the year out with my players cutting the nets down and, you know, climbing up on the ladder, cutting the nets down the first day of practice because I wanted for them to be able to visualize and be able to feel 
that feeling of what we're playing for, like that why. That why is to win this championship. And if we win a championship, so many other things can come from it. If it's you all getting free scholarships, um, if, it's, if it's us being great entertainment, but a hardworking people to pay their money to come see us, like we're taking their minds off of the ills or the day that they may have, even if it's just the two or three hours. So to get them to understand that why, it didn't matter how much I had them run. It didn't matter how much you know, uh, studying that they had to do. Uh, you know, how much or what time I had them in the gym or how long I kept them. They didn't necessarily find the what because they understood the why. And I think that if we as leaders, if we as individuals understand our why, if we can just sit still and be quiet, and a lot of times that's one of the most scariest places to be, just quiet. You know, that's why everybody has to have their phone, the radio, something working on, like like taking up space in their mind. Because when we sit quiet by ourselves, it can be very scary because of what are we thinking, what are we saying to ourselves. But if it's that time also that if you understand your why, God will then give you the what and the how. And it seems as though like, oh, where did that idea come from? Where did that idea come from? But if we just understand our why, and if our why is important enough to us, then we won't let other people count us out because we'll know what to do and we'll know how to do it eventually because our why is totally strong. And I learn every day from my son, you hear he's whining yeah. about this boots is too too tight right now. I guess the system side is too tight. So it's not always about, you know, what happened, but it's why. He's he's hollering because why? Because <laughs> he said that his feet hurt. So, you know, a lot of times our our why in in fact that my son always gives me like like instant education. And like I just said, sometimes our why will make us scream until we can figure out another what or another how or get the attention of those individuals that we may need to get to be able to carry us along. Because we can't do nothing by ourselves. So in understanding that why, now you have to connect the people that will help you get there faster because God will put people around us that will help us get there faster. And then the last thing we have to understand that those people that God puts around us, they're not always going to be good for us. Absolutely. They're not going to always be good to us. But we have to understand why God is putting people in our lives at that particular time. Sometimes it's to help us in their deeds. Come on, Sometimes bro. it's to help us in watching them do what they do so that we cannot do what they do. Do. So a lot of times, you know, and I'm not saying go put yourself in bad situations, but you have to understand that everybody that, and, and you spoke so eloquently about this the other day, for a, re a reason, a season, and a lifetime. And for those that haven't saw that episode, haven't listened to it, if I saw it on Facebook, you know, so go watch it on Facebook. They have to watch that, Eric, and I think that that will explain what I'm saying here. got to put people around you. But you have to understand the importance and the reason why God has put them around you at that particular time. And you have to be able to leverage that relationship to be able to help you get where you're going. Because, again, your why will then give you your hows and your what. And so that's my, you know, final word. Um, you know, again, I thank you guys for allowing me on this call. As I told Brandy, you know, I love to talk. Um, but, and, you know, once you get done, if I can let people know how to get in contact with, with, with me and the things that I got going on, um, I appreciate that too, but do it yeah, now. go tap in. Go, go ahead and do it. Kelly, hey coach, go, um, go ahead and do it now, coach. Call on go ahead, go ahead and do it now, coach. Let them know how they can get in touch with you. Okay. So, um, you can, uh, catch me, uh, my 
Email is info at bless the ball. That's B L E S S E D. The number two, the word ball, and the letter S as in skill and D as in development. Info at bless the ball com. If you want to reach out to me, if you have any questions, um, also, and I can uh, drop the link in the on the actual Facebook uh, this morning. If you would like to get copies of any of my uh, two books, so the first book is Understanding Life Through the Game of Basketball, and that's just the way that I learn. I learn as as I'm talking, as I'm teaching. That's how I learn. I learn, you know, leadership, learn discipline, learn all those things from basketball, and so I put that all in a book about leadership. Um, and then my second book is Create the Perfect Storm, uh, where you know I talk about those visualization things, those imagery, what can we do? So all athletes, as Brandy says, you know, her, her playing sports, and she understands all athletes have that thing that they call the zone. Well, all business people have it also. Like, and they can't really explain it. They just know that every shot they throw up, every meeting that they go to is a win. And that this book, Create the Perfect Storm, shows you mentally how to put yourself in that space where it's almost like a blue ocean, to where everything that you throw up because you're in the right frame of mind to get yourself mentally ready for the task and the course that you're having. So I put those those two links, but you can catch me uh, at uh, at Coach Carvel Bailey. That's my Facebook fan page, and you know, reach out to me if you want to grab a book, if you got any questions, and if you have athletes that are looking to get a basketball scholarship and they're under-recruited or under-recruited, um, you know, sit down and uh, with me, reach out, and, and let's talk about creating a plan for them to be able to know and do those things that those college coaches want so that they can get a head start and get an unfair advantage on everybody else. So that's it. Uh, I thank you guys uh, again for listening to me go on and on. Um, and Eric and Brandy, I thank you guys again. This is uh, one of the hottest leadership calls in the country, and I've listened to a lot of them, and I'm on um, a couple of them, but I definitely tap into this one as much as possible uh, because it's not only giving people hope, but it's also giving people an education, and it's not a lot of people that's out there doing that for free. And I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate you once again. And um, Miss Brandon, you gonna close us out? Sure am. So of course my famous words are be great on purpose, be intentional, be deliberate about your journey, about your goals and what your vision. Don't let nobody turn you around. You don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to get started to be great. And a thousand steps starts with the very first step. So, hey, ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you guys. Wherever you are, you could have been anywhere else, but you decided to come on, even if you're out there on social media. Uh, Coach Coach Bell is going to drop his links on this Facebook feed so you can see it. And this live is going to be – we're going to try to keep this live going on a regular basis, whoever's on. Guys, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going hot with some of the hottest leaders and hottest speakers that's, that's out there. And like he said, we're bringing this information to you for free, but we are still getting paid. We're getting paid in, in knowledge. So I appreciate you guys for joining us. Once again, uh, go out and be great on purpose. You know, do something to touch somebody's life. Stay focused. Don't be distracted. Um, even when you think you're helping some, <clears throat> helping somebody, you just may be, <clears throat> excuse me, you may just be causing some distraction. Because we have to remember, God is not the author of confusion. And if you guys, anybody is, is experiencing confusion in your life, you need to walk away from it because that's not of God. Hey, guys, I see you guys. I hear from you guys on Wednesday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Share the call. Like the post. Look at this again. I hope you found some value. Thanks again, Coach Carvel Belly, uh, co-host Ms. Brandy Gates. We had our, our guest speaker to give our prayer, Ms. Keisha Brody, and myself, Eric McKinley. We signing off. You guys have an awesome Better than an amazing day. Be great on purpose. Like I always say, when you know better, you can do better. And the only knowledge that's powerful is properly applied knowledge. You guys take care. Peace.